oh my god so i know i look like crap right now um my hair look my hair is not looking the best but we just gonna ignore that because big brother just ended three two hours ago and boy do i got a lot to say about this week now i am reviewing week two um if you guys didn't watch week one i suggest y'all watch it because why not anyway so we're gonna start off with sunday's episode where memphis won hoh and basically he kind of went over with his alliance that basically what he wants to do is kind of scare the other house guests into playing the safety suite so nobody will have the safety card by the end of the final week which would be the third week of using the, the safety suite um, so he wanted everybody to use it and he was trying to convince like one or two or three alliance members of his own to use it so it looks like they don't they're not working together everyone was kind of reciprocating except danny and nicole f who definitely were not um taking part of his plan because they knew that it would benefit memphis and not them because of course memphis would still have his um safety week vip pass while the other members of his alliance won't so they definitely were not falling for it so i think the people from his alliance that did end up um going after the safety thing was um christmas tyler and cody and then of course danny and nicole f were like uh fuck no anyway and then from there um the, to be honest which as much as i don't care for memphis i will say that i don't really care for him i will say he did play a pretty good strategy when it came to his hoh run because everybody that was trying to go up to him kind of like you know asking to see who he was putting up he basically just told everybody look nobody's safe in this house so take control of your own game and play the safety suite and it definitely kind of ruffled uh not ruffled but it definitely scared bailey because she definitely was like holy crap i'm not going to be safe this week so she decided to play the safety suite it basically basically doing that it convinced a lot of people to do the safe to play the safety suite because you know memphis was not assuring anybody that they're safe but when Memphis said this to Nicole, A, saying, hey, guess what? Nobody's safe in this house, so just play the safety suite to ensure your safety. Nicole wants to be up on her fucking soapbox and say, oh, you don't run my game, Memphis, so like, no, I won't play the safety suite. And then she was one of the people who didn't play the safety suite. And she's like, I'm gonna trust my gut or whatever, girl. Your gut must be fucking filled with chloroform or something because I don't know what the fuck you've been think thinking. So basically, um... There was a little pre pre gaming with um, Christmas and Ian. Basically, Ian asking Christmas that if he if she were to win, would she use it? Would she use the the, uh, the safety thing on him as well? And she said, Yeah, sure, definitely. And I think he reciprocated the same thing. He's like, Hey, if I win, I'll keep you safe and blah 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 blah. So basically, some people that Memphis was thinking about targeting was Nicole A, David, also Janelle and Kaser as well, and Ian as well, and. Um, basically with the safety suite basically what had to happen was they all had to balance there was two trade two tables and they had you know the table was kind of wobbly and they had to put drinks on each table on each of the two and each drink had different um had different weights on it so they all had to play it but again they had to put i think three drinks on one table four drinks on the other table and they kind of had to balance each one out um that definitely looked pretty difficult i'm not gonna lie that looked pretty difficult so anyway basically i there was a lot of people who played so i can't really remember everybody but it was tyler cody um christmas ian davon bailey i want mm, i don't remember who else played david he played i think that was it seven people i can't remember the rest of the people who played but anyway um christmas it wasn't a shocker to me that Christmas won just because she was the one who was kind of a lot of the segment when it came to the safety suite safety was on her and Ian was very focused on them so I kind of had a feeling she was going to win anyway so she ended up winning and she decided to save Ian and Memphis was upset about that now when Christmas was talking about how happy she was that she won 
Memphis was talking in the diary room saying some bullshit about like, oh, well, Ian was one of my main targets, so I guess I can't um, nominate him now because he's safe because Christmas saved him. I'm thinking to myself, motherfucker, did you? Um, I'm not cutting that part out. Anyway, motherfucker, did you by any chance tell Christmas that don't save Ian? Did you tell Christmas do not save this person because I want to nominate him? He's a potential nominee. No, you didn't say that. So shut your dumb bitch ass up. Shut it. Please. Thank you. That part just... Ugh. And the fact that he literally had the audacity to be like, oh, well, I guess I can't get revenge on Dan for Dan now. Like, first of all, motherfucker, the fact that you're trying to get revenge over some... Uh, Ian winning nine, seven, seven years ago? Eight years ago? You focus on your restaurants focus that they're not going down under because of COVID-19 why are you so focused on evicting Ian just because Dan just because he beat Dan in season 14 first of all the fact that you're carrying on this 8 year revenge it's really sad on your part A B the reason why your boy Dan lost is because he had poor jury management. I will say this. I will say this. I personally feel like Dan should have won season 14. That's just me though. That's me though. But Ian played, Danielle Reyes said this best. She said, Ian played the best game for the jury because the jury is the one who's voting. Did I think Dan played a better game than Ian? A hundred times better. But who played the game for the jury? Ian did because he had good jury management. Everyone loved Ian as far as I'm aware. So like, of course, they were going to vote for him. And Dan backstabbed everyone. So it's like, why, don't be blaming Ian. Don't hate the player, hate the game, motherfucker. So it's like the fact that he wants to evict Ian like for like a kind of like a, what is it called? Like, like revenge for Dan type of thing. Or it's like, oh, I want to like evict Ian because he beat Dan. First of all, Dan um uh dig his dug his own grave because he had poor jury management. Ian again, don't hate the player, hate the game. Ian won because Dan sucked at his uh fucking social game. Let's just say that. And anyway, but yes. He came with that bullshit or whatever. And then um and then from there um, I believe they were having some strategy. Um, Janelle and Kaser came to um, Janelle and Kaser. Oh, maybe I'll mm, maybe I'll talk about that next episode. But anyway, yes. So basically, that was the first. That was Sunday's episode. Basically, that's what they were um, talking about. Um, and okay, I will talk about this. Janelle and Kaser were trying to convince. Um, Memphis to nominate Nicole F because you know that Nicole was basic um Janelle was basically saying you know Nicole F has won before why keep her around she's a snake in the grass she's very sneaky which she is she is I love Nicole F but I know the game that she's capable of and then um Memphis brought this to the attention of Nicole F and then Nicole F was getting nervous that they, they're going to be targeting her blah 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 and of course Memphis was not going to nominate Nicole F because he's in the alliance with her but again He's not going to be speaking those same words about Nicole F when she evicts his ass, when she stabs him in the front because she brought those knives a la um, Dan and Derek Gate, All-Star Gate. Anyway, so Memphis ends up nominating um, Nicole A and David, and I was so, so, so happy that he did not nominate Janelle. <laughs> so that's all I care about. If you don't nominate Janelle, that's all I care about. And again... I need I, I I really need to dig deep and find some sympathy to give these people because Nicole A really sat there and started crying when this bitch had the opportunity opportunity to play the safety suite and she didn't play it so she's crying that she got nominated bitch you didn't Memphis tell you to play it but you want to be up on your fucking soapbox and be like oh I'm not gonna let the, someone tell me to, to run my game well bitch guess what that's what happens now you you what what is that thing it's like that's what happens when you act the way you act you want to sit there and be like oh i'm strong i'm gonna trust my gut which means i'm not gonna nominate i'm not gonna play the safety suite well guess what bitch you're nominated now 
So let's fucking sit there, deal with it, and wipe those motherfucking tears because this is all stars. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I really, really want to be sympathetic to these people, but it's like literally, literally, it's like, I want to be in that house to know why do you cry so much when you're in the house? Like, I heard Big Brother's like a pressure cooker, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, y'all played this game before. Why y'all crying? Please tell me why y'all crying. Like, can y'all please just wipe your motherfucking tears, play this fucking game, grow some balls, or fucking Nicole get you. Step your, step your pussy up, put those titties up, and get your ass going. Win this veto. Do something. Stop fucking crying. I can't stand when these fucking people are crying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where's my sympathy? Where is my sympathy? I don't know where it is. But these fucking house kids who cry piss me off like, did your mother die? Did your dog die? Did your fucking dust bunny die? If nobody died, then I don't want to see you cry. I'm sorry. If you didn't have a death in the family, I don't want to see you cry. If you broke a limb, go ahead and cry. If you lost a family member or a beloved pet, go ahead and cry. You getting nominated. I'm sorry. There's no sympathy for me there. Shut the fuck up and play this fucking game. Period. And anyway, so then um, we're going to go to Wednesday's episode. So Wednesday's episode starts off with... Um, <laughs> the house guest talking about uh, Memphis's nomination speech because he basically kind of drilled um, he kind of drilled David by telling him you know hey you um, you're the rookie so it's time for you to play blah 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 everyone thought he was hard on him when he said that and again I'm not the biggest fan of Memphis but he's right it's like first of all it's like David you were literally in the house house for a day you got evicted so it's like hey show what you got you know like you're on the block the spotlight's on you show us what you got that's the way I took it yeah he probably maybe his tone his tone was a little bit like aggressive but I found no issue with his nomination speech a lot of people thought he was like being very like I don't know like rude or disrespectful no he just basically said you're the rookie here because you got evicted day one I find no issue with that something I forgot to mention about Sunday's episode was um, with the have-nots. So basically, a new thing that's going on, I guess, is that the have-nots, the previous have-nots, have to choose new have-nots. And I feel like they did that to save TV time because usually with a have-not competition, also they do that, I think, to like so they don't have to make new sets because, of course, have-not competitions consist of making a set, making them play a competition, and making them win. So I feel like it cuts a lot of TV time for them to just have the past ha uh, have nots nominate new have nots so you don't have to like actually play a competition have the producers or whoever the fuck makes the sets make a new set just for a have not competition so i think it was smart on their part and very uh, it saved a lot of tv time let's just say that so then um any memorable moments on wednesday uh nicole was crying again which again stop fucking crying anyway so she was crying and i think um you know david and her were like oh like we're gonna move on from that anyway once again janelle and caser were trying to convince you know um we're trying to convince memphis to nominate nicole f and basically janelle scoped it out from the from the get-go and she said you know i feel like there's a four-person alliance between tyler danny cody and nicole f and she's like and i think nicole's a very dangerous player because she's won before and why are you gonna give you know her the this game twice basically and something that pissed me off is the fact that Nicole really sat there in Memphis's HOH room, I think, and said, I feel like it's a personal attack that she wants to nominate me or wants to get me out of this house. Like, girl, no, it's game. Stop fucking thinking every single time someone does something to you, it's personal. No, just because you get nominated doesn't mean it's a personal hit against you. Like, shut the fuck up, Nicole. I, Nicole F, I thought you were smarter when it came to that bullshit. Please, no. I'm not gonna have that. If you say it's personal, no, we're not gonna do that. Like, if, like, I don't know, like, if you, like, when it comes to personal stuff, like, if she literally, I don't know, like, I feel like, <sighs> like, I don't know, like, when someone says you're per, like, it's a personal thing that you wanna get me out, it's like, what's personal about it? You're, you're a former winner. Why, are we, why is Janelle gonna try, Janelle's gonna try to get you out of here because she doesn't want you to be a two time winner. Bottom line, cut and dry. And, you know, and 
I love how the fact that Jen, uh, Nicole F tries to victimize herself and say, oh, well, she just, she doesn't like me and I, I just don't know why. She just never liked me. It's like, bitch, stop trying to act like you haven't talked shit about her. Just because she talks shit about you and you feel that way, the fact that you talk shit about her as well, that does not make you any better. I'm sorry, mama. I don't know. I don't know where you think you come from, but the fact you are basically adding fuel to the fire. So, or you're adding, you basically, it's like Nick, how should I say, Janelle's causing a forest fire and you're causing another forest fire. You're not doing anything to resolve the issue. D Janelle doesn't like you, therefore she talks shit about you. What do you do? Talk shit about Janelle. That doesn't make you better. Two, two negatives don't equal a positive. Sometimes in math, but like usually, you know, in the grand scheme of things, two negatives don't equal a positive. So the fact that she's talking shit about you and you want to sit there and be like, I just don't know why she doesn't like me. But yet you're, you are you always got her name in your motherfucking mouth. That don't make you better. I'm sorry. I love you, Nicole F., but I'm going to put your ass in your fucking place when it needs to be. Anyway, I digress. And then also, um, Ian, he got his punishment, which basically was he had to do like four scenes of this like big brother star wars type of thing which definitely fit him because he's a nerd anyway so that basically a little funny segment that happened that was happening around the house anyway but going back to the whole lions thing so yes nicole manifested in her head that she thought it was personal that nicole that janelle's going after her where it's like not i personally don't think so you can like I'm trying to think of something like you cannot like you, you can't evict someone for game purposes even if you don't like them like you can take your emotions out of it to be honest where it's like someone can be a horrible person but if if but you don't have like if you're going to evict someone it it doesn't necessarily necessarily always pertain to they're a horrible person that's why I'm getting them out you know again it's like it's a game move and I think personally I feel that Janelle's way 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 more smarter than to evict someone for personal reasons. That's just my thing. I'm sorry. When has, correct me if I'm wrong, when has Janelle ever had a track record of evicting somebody because she simply doesn't like them or on a personal level? You can say maybe Jennifer from season six, but she basically backstabbed the, the Sovereign Six by evicting Kaser. So I do think that was a game move on Janelle's part. Of course, she hated Jennifer for nominating her and stuff. It was kind of like payback in a way, but I do feel like there was some sort of game in that aspect. But anyway, um, other things that happened, oh, some, something that happened too is, this is just my personal thing. Um, oh my God, we're already at 17 minutes in. Ugh, I'm trying to give these videos on their 20 minutes. It's going to be like a 30 minute video. I'm going to try to be quick. But anyway, Kevin was talking about like, the people were talking about kids. Like Enzo was talking about his kid and blah, 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 blah. And then after that, they asked Kevin, how you know if he gets a kid is he gonna adopt or how is he gonna have kids because that's what he wants in life and then kevin said he would like to do in vitro now i'm someone where like okay someone's gonna come at me and say well if you don't want kids then shut the fuck up about it why do you need to talk about that well i'm gonna talk about it because the bitch got an opinion i personally feel if hell freezes over and if I ever wanted a kid I would not put all my effort into trying to have an in vitro baby or having a baby that looks like me when there's thousands and thousands and thousands of children that need loving homes you know like and to be honest I would rather maybe want to adopt like a older kids because those toddlers man they fucking stress me the fuck out anyway I just feel like to be honest it's like I just feel bad you know like I feel like when I see people with children like I don't know and, and it's just like oh like yeah we did it in vitro I'm like oh so you would rather spend all that money by creating a child when you could have used all that money in adopting a child and giving that child a good home and possibly giving a child a college fund but that ain't none of my business is it because I don't have plans on having children that's my stance on this whole in vitro thing slash adoption thing but you know take it or leave it also i love how devon's talking about black lives matter girl yes y'all we need to talk about that and we need to make the big brother racist out there angry the fact that she's talking about this girl keep talking about it keep doing it because the fucking news needs to hear about this anyway 
Um, so the, the veto competition comes around and it's basically who plays. Um, the two nominees, Memphis, um, I think it was Tyler, Ian, and somebody else. I forgot who the last person was, TBH. I think it was Cody, maybe Cody. So this uh, veto, uh, veto competition was very, very um, interesting, honestly, for, to say the least. Um, so basically the veto competition was where they had to basically hold like a, I'm not going to show that anyway. So basically what it is, like you have like a little platform like this, you have two handles and there's a, a platform here and you have to balance a ball on this shit, like a circular ball with a platform just like this. And you have to keep still and who knows how much that fucking shit weighs. Okay. Something I will say though is. I told my brother this right when the competition was about to start. I said, I'm not worried about Nicole A winning because she never wins anything. What happens like literally 10 seconds in the competition, she drops the ball. The bitch drops the ball on the floor and she's eliminated. All I thought was you fucking idiot. That was the first words that came out of my mouth. Literally, this hoe wants to be crying and crying and crying like bitch. You miss an opportunity to keep yourself safe by not comp competing in the safety suite take that fucking fire that you have under your asshole and put it in the veto competition what do you do you're out within the first 10 seconds why 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 is this hoe casted as an all-star when she can't win to save her motherfucking life literally if there's a competition between her and a and a fucking tortoise who can run the finish line the fastest i'm pretty sure the tortoise will win i'm pretty sure the tortoise will win and it really <laughs> and again she's putting up the water like, i'm not like a sorry loser i'm just like i just wanted to win why don't you fucking win shut the fuck up stop fucking crying because i'm sick of the crying first of all you missed two opportunities to keep yourself safe shut up and sit with and take what's handed to you anyway so lo and behold memphis ended up winning the competition and they were doing that for over 30 minutes which i find really crazy and then basically, again, Janelle was trying to convince um, Memphis to nominate Nicole F. All of all of um, the alliance of his, all, all six people or five people, wanted him to nominate Janelle and do a backdoor plan because you know Nicole F was nervous that you know Nicole uh, that Janelle's going to come after her and blah blah blah. Like they think it's the most logical decision. Danny was trying to convince him to do it, but he wasn't doing it. And he basically ultimately didn't keep, he kept nominations the same, which thank God, because Nick, because Janelle is safe. Um, so basically, I also kind of feel like Memphis is kind of digging himself into a hole because, again, the fact that he didn't nominate Janelle, which was the majority of his alliance members' decision, they wanted Janelle out of the house. Tyler did. Nicole F did, Danny didn't. Danny was very aggressive about it. Let's just say that, Danny, your tone seems very pointed and I don't appreciate that, okay? Anyway, so they were all trying to convince him and the fact that he didn't, I feel like the kind of sends a message to his, to his other Alliance members basically saying, okay, so they, so basically Memphis is not thinking about our group. He's just thinking about himself or what benefits him, which ultimately that's what you should be doing, but you're not supposed to do it so blatantly, if you know what I mean. So like the fact that he kind of just like, just flat out was like, yeah, I'm keeping noms the same when, you know, David and Nicole A are like such small players, like you can get out a big target. Yes, like Janelle, but I'm glad he didn't because I love Janelle. Um, he ended up um, just keeping noms the same, but I feel like that works to his detriment because of the fact that let's say, for example, the, the, the six Alliance members, they like, let's say they're backed up into a corner and two of them have to get, and one of them had to get evicted. Guess who's at the bottom of the totem pole? Memphis, because he showed his cards early, basically. And also on top of that, his alliance members are already starting to see that he's basically pe playing the game for himself and not really taking the groups into consideration. Because, you know, when you're working to it, when you're working within an alliance, you kind of have to compromise, you know, and he didn't do any type of compromising at all. So I think that shows the group that Memphis is playing for himself. And again, if those five Alliance members stay together and they stay true, Memphis is going to be the left one out. And guess who is the bottom, who is in the bottom of the tournament and will be the first one expendable? 
when the when they need to drop an alliance member it'll be memphis but he's not thinking about that anyway a danny made a funny comment saying how like she wants to danny said something saying like oh memphis wants to call david the rookie but he made the most rookie move in big brother blah 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 we, we stand Danny. That's why she's the queen and the rest are peasants. Um, anyway, Thursday's episode comes and I foreshadowed Nicole A going home because everyone, every basically everybody was in workout gear and she was the only one dressed up nicely. That's how you know when someone's going home. Literally. you Most of the time. Most of the time. Anyway. So that's how I name, mainly know when someone's going home. So Thursday's episode starts off with <laughs> after the veto meeting, Nicole wants to, Nicole A finally wants to say, I'm not leaving this game. It just lit a fire under me. Bitch, where was that fire when you first got nominated? Where was that fire for that veto competition? Bitch, you got nothing else to do besides just campaign for yourself to stay. And that's it. Like literally girl, it's a little too late to have a fire under your ass. You literally had two opportunities to keep yourself safe and you failed at both of them. So this fire is, is the fire, is the fire the something like, is the, I can't even talk. I'm like lost for words. I'm lost for words. Anyway, so basically the, 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 the episode consisted of basically David and Nicole A campaigning for themselves to say so first the first scene I think shows you know Devon trying or Nicole A trying to campaign to Devon to, so she can be safe and Devon was kind of like telling Nicole A hey girl like I'm sorry I love you you're a great person but I don't want to eat basically she kind of just said I don't want to eat big David because I want someone who's black to win <laughs> I'm not trying to say it like that but she wants someone she doesn't want to evict someone that looks like her, like as in her skin color, you know, which to be honest, like it would be awesome to have like the first ever, you know, black winner of Big Brother, which has not even literally this show's been on for 20 years and there still has not been a black winner or a black female winner. Like how crazy is that? So I definitely do see Davon's perspective on that. But when she tried to, t you know, ask David because um, Kaser was coming to um, Davon basically or Bailey, Davon, I think basically telling um, basically telling Davon that, you know, David is in an alliance and they need to get him out. Davon tried to get information from David and she was very adamant on keeping him safe. And he basically was not opening his lips. And Davon kind of like took offense to that as in like, bro, I'm trying to keep you safe. And yet you're not giving me any information. You're not helping me out by any means. So she was kind of conflicted on keeping him. You know what I'm also conflicted about is the fact that Nicole and Kaser want to keep Nicole A when Nicole A is just going to deadweight them because Nicole A sucks at everything she does. I'm sorry. She has a great social game, but she sucks at competitions. What is she going to bring to the table besides just her social game? It's like you need someone to win for y'all because I'm sorry, Janelle and Kaser, you need numbers on your side, but also people who can actually win for y'all so you can be safe. And Nicole A is not going to provide that. I'm sorry. But they were trying really hard to campaign for Nicole A. And for some reason, Nicole A got it in, in her mind that Janelle was not going to keep her safe and Janelle's being fake and blah, 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 blah. But you know what pissed me off too is the fact that Nicole A literally said, not verbatim, um, but she literally kind of said along the lines of like, I'm nominated because Janelle didn't fight for me hard enough not to be nominated. Or the fact that I'm associated with Janelle, it's it's um, fucking up my game. And that's why I'm nominated. And literally when Janelle tried to tell Nicole A, I'm sorry, I tried fighting for you to not get nominated. I tried fight, I tried talking to Memphis. I tried talking to him, blah, blah, blah. And then Nicole A says very snarkily, I guess not hard enough. I'm like, bitch, you like, stop trying to blame other people for your detriment you didn't play the safety suite you're nominated you had the chance to win the veto just uh, she can't see it because of, of course you can't see what people do behind closed doors but janelle was fighting for you a b you got to take some accountability bitch i'm sorry but it's like did you win that veto you were the first one out within the first 10 seconds you were told literally told by memphis to play the fucking safety suite but you didn't because your fucking ego was as big as your fucking head and you didn't fucking play it why are you not confident in your mess tell me why 
that really irked me the fact that she literally had the audacity to quest to literally basically be angry at janelle for not keeping her safe with like bitch you got to take your game into your own hands like memphis said and he said <laughs> play the safety suite and what did she do you're not gonna tell me how to run my game well bitch maybe you should have listened i'm sorry anyway that really pissed me off and again it's like janelle was genuinely trying like literally janelle can literally like i don't know janelle could literally like <laughs> the thing about like literally like <sighs> i need to take a moment of silence here literally whatever janelle does the other house guests have something to talk about it danny opens her gigantic fucking mouth Nicole F opens her gigantic fucking mouth. Nicole A doesn't trust Janelle. For what? For what? Have, haven't you seen Janelle's last season and how she was loyal to her alliance basically to the bitter end? You know, she literally like was loyal to her alliance literally like throughout the entire game. And again, it's like the fact that like being aligned with Janelle is such a detriment. Like, oh, that's so sad. Like Janelle's a fucking legend. Like wouldn't, wouldn't you want to be protected by the legend? And first of all, wouldn't you want to align yourself with someone like Janelle? Because again, as I said previously in my past video, who's going to be targeted first? Janelle. So you're protected right there. But anyway, um, yeah, so it really pissed me off the fact that Nicole A really had the audacity to say, well, Janelle's hurting my game and she didn't fight for me hard enough to keep me safe and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you got to take some accountability for your actions, hunty. I'm sorry. Like, you had two opportunities to keep your ass safe. There's so much talking you can do. Like, if you literally thought that Janelle was going to magically convince Memphis not to nominate you, where it's like, I'm sorry, Janelle, like... Janelle did the best that she could and just because she talked just because she tried like she said she tried it didn't mean it was going to be convincing like just because you can talk to somebody and try to convince them to do something your way it doesn't always mean that they're going to do it I don't know if she thought that if Janelle spoke with Memphis and he was automatically going to say oh yeah you're right Janelle I won't nominate Nicole A anyway uh, but yeah, so basically Jan uh, Nicole A wanted nothing to do with Janelle because she, did she didn't think that um, Janelle was being genuine with her when Janelle really was. And again, Janelle was crying. I'm just like, Ugh. when Janelle cries, it's okay because I like Janelle. But everyone else, shut the fuck up. Janelle's a veteran. She deserves a cry or two. But, the f but like Janelle cried for different reasons. She cried because, you know, she that's unexcusable too janelle shouldn't have cried for that bitch let me just say that let's just say that anyway so eviction day comes and nicole a gave like a little speech saying how basically like oh memphis you wanted to go after someone like little old me blah 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 and then from there nicole a got evicted and i was I happy about it? Yes, I true. I actually did want David to stay because Nicole left on, I think it was 12 people that were voting. 12 people that were voting. I think it was like a, like Nicole only got two votes to stay, I believe, I think. And everyone else voted for her to leave. Um, so, so from there, um, she met with Julie and Julie basically told her you know janelle and Kesa were literally trying to campaign for you to keep you safe and and she basically exposed like the alliance that were trying to get her out of the house and she predicted the alliance and she told her janelle was trying to keep you safe and then nicole was like oh my god like i can't believe it like that's what she get bitch that's what she get for being a dumb bitch stop fucking crying please stop fucking crying that's what you get for not trusting Janelle. I'm sorry. She tried to keep you safe, even though you suck as a competitor. And again, I have no hate or any animosity towards Nicole A. I don't know her, so I'm not gonna, but I'm looking at it from a viewer's perspective. You played a dumb bitch game. That's, that's what I gotta say. And it really irritated me. And she finally figured this out. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe that you're now trying to keep me safe. Yeah, bitch. Maybe don't be hearing what, what the, the flapping mouths of other bitches, okay? Literally, 
If someone's trying to keep you safe, why are you gonna reject their advances? If someone's literally telling you, I wanna keep you here, why are you gonna say, oh wait, I don't, I don't, I wanna be safe, but not by you. Like, I'm sorry, uh, Nicole A, did you wanna stay in this game? I'm sorry, there's an expression called beggars can be fucking choosers. Maybe try that, okay? Maybe try that. Anyway, so she went home. Again, I was pretty okay with her going home, like I said. David, I really want to see him actually play this game. He's a, he, I can already tell he's 10 times better of a competitor than um, Nicole A. So I really want to see him go far in this game. And again, I just feel like people who get evicted day one or week one definitely deserve a bigger chance. So definitely, I hope he goes a little bit further in this game. Um, anyway. So the HOH composition comes and it was a pretty semi new one that I feel like they, I've kind of seen this in past games, but not really where basically it was basically, let's see, I need a, I need a prop. Um, so basically it looked like this. So the house guests were here and there was numbers labeled one, two, three, four, five. And they basically had to grab like a fake beer can or a beer glass and they had to kind of kind of like a game of shuffle you know they had they had to like get in the number system and whoever had the highest number in the shortest amount of time won they had to do that three times so they had three different lanes and they had to do that my girl janelle was one point away of winning who won but tyler now, don't get me wrong, I like Tyler, but I know that he's going to nominate Janelle, which again, I literally am fearing for her big brother life here. Like, I want her to go far, but I just literally feel like every week I have to worry about this hoe because, girl, we where's the season seven Janelle? We need the season seven Janelle to come out and fucking play. And you know what I find funny too is the fact that everyone's talking about how big of a threat she is, yet she's won nothing this entire season. She's won, she's won zero out of three HOHs. She's won zero out of three vetoes. Why are y'all conspiring making her seem like this, like she's going to win everything when literally she's won nothing, okay? She's won absolutely nothing. And Janelle, we need season seven Chanel to come out of the fucking bag. Okay, Janelle, like, do I need a, like, is it in my house? Do I need to do a scavenger hunt to find this fucking season seven Janelle? I'm looking for All-Stars Janelle. Like All-Star Janelle where her back was against the wall and she won four HOHs, five POVs, and that's why the bitch holds a record 10 plus years later and nobody, nobody has been able to beat her. And she still holds that record when only 14 people were casted, by the way, not 16. So they were a week short, two weeks short, actually. So the fact that Janelle accumulated nine comp wins in a matter of, I don't know, like 14 weeks rather than 16 weeks like the regular house guests get nowadays, that's very commendable. So we're gonna tune in to um, tune in next week to um, see what happens week three. I fear, absolutely fear for Janelle's life in the Big Brother house. Please pray with me. Anyway, it's gonna suck to see her go. But I hope that if Janelle and Kaser are nominated, they evict Kaser because they will see that Janelle is the bigger threat. And then they can just evict her the next week. But, oh, it really sucks. It really does. It does. It sucks that these buffoons are going to get the queen of big brother Janelle out of here. Anyway. No. Don't get rid of Ian. Don't get rid of Nicole F. Like, yeah, like they won the game before, but yeah, just hand them another half a million dollars and give them a million, right? Yeah, let's do that. The fact that Janelle has played the game three times and never won, yeah, she's the biggest threat. She gotta get out of here, like literally. Oh, by the way, shout out to Janelle. I'm someone where I don't care when, I, I judge people that wear designer labels, but that fucking, that, bougie ass Janelle, uh, Janelle, Chanel earring that she had. That was pretty funny. I found it so funny. Like, girl, okay. Anyway, oof. And you like, anyway. Well, that's all that I got to say, but I'll say this video is super long. I'm gonna try to keep it under 30 minutes, or at least in 30 minutes. So anyway, until next time.
Bye.